In this lesson, we're gonna talk about our third marriage principle, and it's all about communication and conflict. It's the good stuff. Now we've heard in our first lesson, our first principle was that love is a choice, not just a feeling. How important choosing love is to a lasting marriage. Our last lesson was about trust, that trust is earned, not freely given. That's so important to understand in a healthy marriage that each person needs to come to the relationship and say, I need to earn your trust. I need to show you by my actions that I'm a trustworthy person. Now in this lesson, it's all about how do we communicate and especially how do we communicate in times of conflict? So just like we've done in the other videos, my husband and I are gonna share the talking points and then you're gonna have an opportunity to discuss it with your spouse, your marriage mentors, or your small group leaders. So let's get to our first point. Conflict is essential in marriage and it takes communication. Now, a lot of people think, well, wait, hold on a second. I, you know, isn't fighting bad? No, fighting's good. You know, fighting, as long as you fight right, conflict is important. It's important that you're willing to have conflict, that you're willing to engage in conflict because in a, in a marriage, you've got a man and a woman who have two different perspectives, who have two different backgrounds, who have two different ways of looking at life. And so naturally there's going to be conflict and that's good as long as you know how to do it right. You know, conflict is valuable. You have to be willing to fight for your marriage. A lot of times if we're counseling with a couple or mentoring a couple and they come in and it looks like that there's no fight left in them, that's a bad sign because that means one or both of them have just given up on it and they're just done. They're done with their marriage. Don't give up on your marriage at any point. So be willing to engage on a regular basis in healthy conflict and communication. You know, be willing to fight for your marriage. And that's what we'll be talking about here in this lesson. Here are some practical tips for you. Let's start with what not to do. Poor communication habits include escalating, withdrawing, and invalidating. Okay, so if you've never heard of those three words, let me briefly explain each one. The first one, escalating. Here's why that's a bad habit. Escalators are the people that yell and raise their voice and get angry in times of conflict or when communication isn't going well. Escalating is a bad habit because what ends up happening to escalators is they start raising their voice and yelling and get very excited and their spouse starts to back away and say, whoa, I am not gonna talk to you when you're acting like that. So we're not getting to good communication. So escalating is a bad habit. Now here's the second one I just was describing it, withdrawing. The person that withdraws, is it's a bad habit because that person just says, I don't wanna talk about it. I'm gonna walk away. I'm gonna to refuse to give you my feelings or my thoughts because I don't wanna get into it. I wanna avoid conflict at all costs. So just like the escalating person, the withdrawing person is also not helping the situation because now the withdrawing person's refusing to talk about it. So we're still not getting to healthy communication. And the last one's a little trickier. The invalidating person. This is the person that in communication and in times of conflict say, you don't understand. You don't get it. You're not smart enough to get it. That's dumb. Why do you think that way? Why do you feel that way? Just really putting their spouse down and making them feel inferior or stupid for thinking or feeling the way they feel. So all three of those are very unhealthy, bad habits that we need to avoid if we want to have good communication. So good communication starts with choosing your words wisely. You know, now that you know what to look out for, and maybe in a little bit, you'll be able to talk about which one of those bad habits you tend to have. We all, we all have bad habits. So, I mean, don't feel bad about it. It's just, it's natural. I, I, I tend to be a, a person who withdraws. And, and so I have to recognize that and, and try not to fight that way. Try not to, or try to avoid that kind of bad habit in communication. But good habits are all about, you know, the words you speak and, and being thoughtful and choosing them wisely. Look at how the Bible says it in Ephesians 4. It says, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. This is a great passage to memorize, maybe write down on a card, uh, put it up on your fridge. You know, commit this one to memory because this is really helpful in marriage is, is to really want to build up your marriage with your words. Husbands, remember that. Wives, remember that. That anytime you communicate, especially when it's in conflict, that your heart, your intention is to be intentional about building up your marriage, not about tearing down your spouse, your spouse or, or tearing down anyone else, 
but building up your marriage. And, and if, you, if you use some good habits, if you work just like any skill, if you work on it, you can get better at communication skills. Now we're gonna encourage you to try the three-step method to conflict resolution. You can find these in one of our Marriage Builder series called How to Keep Talking. So we're finally ready to articulate marriage principle number three, and it's this. Healthy couples keep talking. If you want to stay healthy in your marriage, you have to learn how to talk and you have to keep talking. Not just in conflict, but, but in good things. You know, learn to listen to each other, to care about each other, to care about what the other person's thinking. Learn how to communicate, read God's word together, pray together, deal with conflict in a healthy way. Healthy couples keep talking. You keep dating each other. You keep, you know, having interest in one another. That's the sign of a healthy marriage. It's not just love, principle one, that you have this commitment to one another. It's not just that you trust one another, but that it's you, you like each other enough to talk and continue to talk and you have this commitment to talking. Let me just say one more thing. I know a lot of men out there, a lot of husbands, this is not as natural for many men, but guys, I, I'll speak as a, as a man myself, learn to do this. You know, bring this into your marriage and your wife will love it. You know, grow in this in your marriage, in your communication skills, not just with conflict, but just in general. Learn how to talk. Now, all of our resources online are there to help you. We've got topics and series designed to help you to talk about stuff, to have stuff to talk about, to learn to, to learn God's word together and to learn who your spouse is together. All of that stuff is there to encourage you to communicate, to discover and share truth together. So make sure that you do that. Now go ahead and use that workbook and uh, talk about this with your spouse, with your marriage mentor, or with your small group.